Good morning. So, we will continue our discussion on this uh, theorems proved in the thing. We have proved two theorems, Lax Milgram lemma basically, Stambachia variational inequality. And then we will do a uh, uh, problem, abstract problem in a uh, C for the systems. So, let H V be two Hilbert spaces. Hilbert spaces and A from H to H, H to R, B from uh, H cross V, keep that in mind. So, looking for a solution in one solution in H and another solution in V for a system V to R be 2 continuous no ellipticity assumption I am making continuous bilinear forms. Okay. Let z equal to let of set of all sigma in h such that b sigma v equal to 0 for all v in v okay, for all v in v and this contained in h ok it is a subspace. So, we make two assumptions that we make assumptions what are the two assumptions I make the first assumption one is uh, a is z elliptic. So, I am not uh, assuming that A is elliptic on H, I am only H elliptic, I am assuming A is Z elliptic that is uh, A sigma sigma greater than or equal to alpha into sigma of course, this norm is in H square this happens only for all sigma in Z, this is some kernel Z is going to be some kernel. Okay, so, the I am assuming in the restricted set. The second assumption is, is the famous Babuska Brasi condition, Babuska Brasi condition, Brasi condition. This is some sort of a onduness condition, we will see that soon. This is supremum of B tau V by norm tau over h this is over tau in h okay. and uh, this should be greater than or equal to some beta into no v this is for all v in v ok. So, there exists some beta there exists beta positive this is here there exists alpha positive that is this is happening. So, these are the two important conditions you have to make these assumptions. Then the conclusion then for k in h l in v there exists a unique pair Okay. unique pair sigma u sigma in h and u in v such that this bilinear form such that a sigma tau plus b tau v is equal to k and b sigma v is equal to l and this happens for for all tau v tau in h and v in v 
okay. So, that is a conclusion. So, this is your conclusion. Let me put conclusions, assumptions, everything separate. Okay. Keep this, there is a, uh, so basically what is coming here analyzing this equation is something of an adjoint, you have to see that. So, looking for this variation is V here, this variation is V here, the variation is tau here. So, it is a solution is, okay, V, yeah, so there is one small error, U should be coming here, the solution. Okay, so this otherwise you see you do not see the u. Okay, this should be u. Okay, so the solution is sigma and u. Okay, let me try to prove slightly uh, because it's a real application of uh, function the hard theory of application of the. Uh, this is a variational form, what is given is a variational form. So, let me give the proof, proof. So, we can make it as an operator. Uh, so, you have a bilinear forms produces linear operators, we have already seen. So, you have two bilinear forms A, B gives operators A from H to H and an operator B from H to V, exactly what we have done for the earlier thing for uh, in the proof of Stambachia, such that okay, A sigma V is equal to a sigma p and b <coughs> sigma so let me not use for uh, v here because v we always keep it there so a sigma tau let me write because this is in h and b sigma v is equal to b sigma v. So, you see keep that a sigma is in h it works for thing. Uh, so, it is for all sigma tau in h and v in for all v in v. So, that is it. So, you have in this operator equation. So, there is a very simple exercise it is not an exercise, but it is to clear the proof if you have any doubts. So, let me write down the this problem, this is your problem in the variational form. So, let me call it this is to be star. Okay. So, once you have that to be star, so you see the star is can be rewritten as can be in the abstract form of abstract operator form rewritten as a sigma plus b star of tau b star of u may be yeah this should be b star I will tell you where this is work b star of u equal to k and b sigma is equal to L. So, you have an operator equation. Keep that in mind. Okay. So, where is B star? B star is from V to H is the adjoint that is B star of V, B star of V will be in H so, B star of V tau so this is in a product in H will be equal to V V of tau B is a mapping from H to V 
now you have that. So, I call this to be 2 ok. So, uh, or I let me call it to be star because I am calling star for other thing. So, I will call it star, double star. So, I converted this problem star into a problem double star ok. So, let me keep uh, uh, you have more space here or oh, there were more space here. So, I can do that or oh, I should have been written here ok fine. So, you have enough space here. So, let me complete and come here ok. So, I will go in this direction ok. So, B star of E. Now, how is this uh, uh, Babuska Brzee condition? So, these are all small exercises which you do Babuska Brzee implies B norm of B star of V greater than or equal to beta into norm of beta V uh, norm, norm of beta beta into norm of V this is true for all V in V. This implies immediately if you are not familiar check all that B star is 1 1 and closed range which are all part of function analysis closed range and again part of functional analysis study that implies B is on to. So, you see so I am starting my proof from here ok proof not from ok B is on to. So, that implies immediately for every for L in V because B is a mapping from H to V keep that in mind. So, every L in V there exists need not be unique now there exists sigma 1 in H such that B sigma 1 equal to L. Of course, so from here I go here sigma 1 is need not be unique sigma 1 need not be unique as we can add any sigma naught belongs to kernel of P. In fact, you have to add. So, you have to readjust your sigma 1 by suitably adding a sigma naught to get a solution of this equation. So, you got one solution to this one and that solution immediately will not satisfy the first equation in star. So, you have to. So, what do you do is that look for sigma naught in V sigma not in B which is of course, is a subset of H keep that in mind sigma not in V and U in V such that sigma is of the form sigma not plus sigma 1 and uh, A sigma plus B star of U equal to k. So, that we have reduced this problem to this form that is what you do it. So, here is another simple trick we are going to use this one. Now, consider this is slightly a uh, complicated proof, but so consider a sigma plus a Uh, consider this equation consider this equation a sigma naught equal to without your b star. So, I consider a sigma naught plus sigma 1 this equation 
is equal to k, k is given to you, I just remove b star. In other words, you consider a sigma naught plus a sigma naught equal to k minus a sigma 1. Okay. Now, I consider this equation not on whole h, I consider this equation on z. What is the reason there? I do not have the ellipticity of a in h, but I have an ellipticity of a in z. That is what is given. Yeah, that uh, point may be uh, I, I have to say that. So, the ellipticity of uh, thing. So, let me write down. Okay. So, let me write this continue from here. So, so you have this pro, uh, problem this uh, what you want to do that one this is equivalent to the last one is equivalent to a sigma naught tau equal to k tau minus a sigma 1 tau for all tau in z this is contained in h that is what you are going to do it and uh, uh, and a is z elliptic which is given to you this is the assumption to z elliptic that implies uh, there exists a unique sigma naught in z that is what exactly you want it, but the problem is a sigma naught is in way. So, this equation what you have seen here is in z in z. Okay. So, so what about this now the thing so you define sigma is equal to sigma naught plus sigma 1 what about this one what is given is that this is an element in h okay so a sigma plus b, uh, a, a sigma equal to k okay so uh, i want to look for this equation now i want to consider we need existence of u so, that this is equal to k, this is what we want to prove it, but what you have done is that a sigma equal to k in z and z if you observe this is nothing but the kernel of p. So, that implies your a sigma minus k is in kernel of z perp that means kernel of b perp okay you can you conclude that only you cannot conclude a sigma minus k is equal to 0 and that's not what we want it so the kernel of b perp and again you recall the results from here this is nothing but uh, uh, range of b star so this implies uh, there exists uh, there exists uh, an element u of course, uh, uniqueness is guaranteed right now. So, you are only proving the existence there exists u in b star such that a sigma minus k is in uh, equal to uh, uh, minus b star of u you can write because of the linearity. So, uh, minus b star of u or you can write a sigma plus b star of u is equal to k. Indeed, a b sigma is equal to l because b sigma naught is equal to 0. Okay. So, that is the point. So, this does not prove immediately uniqueness, but I will leave it the uniqueness part to you to prove it, you prove directly uniqueness. Suppose, there exists sigma 1 uh, sigma 1 sigma 2 and u 1 u 2 
define the standard way of proving uniqueness define sigma tilde is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 and u tilde is equal to u 1 minus u 2. Okay. So, there is some work involved, but I want you to leave it as an exercise. It is a, a bit you have to prove that one. Uh, exercise prove sigma tilde equal to 0, u tilde equal to 0. Okay. So, that is a Babus Kabrasi theorem. So, go through the proof, understand if you are not familiar, uh, familiar with uh, uh, the and this whatever is there that. So, uh, it is not completely new to you in an infinite dimensional setup these things may be new, but in finite dimensional setup this is not completely new because suppose you want to solve it A x equal to b you see for a matrix A. Uh, is a matrix A. Then if A is invertible, I think I made this remark already, but I am again once more make if A is invertible, then there exists a unique solution. But uh, if A is not invertible, uh, A is uh, A is not invertible. then this has a solution if uh, as a solution of course if you have to have your b has to be in the range of a of course that is a thing but from here uh, you can see that that is equivalent to p is kernel of a, a transpose right so you have to look at the solutions of a transpose of x equal to 0 and it should be orthogonal to the solutions of these homogeneous equations. Okay. So, that is what we are looking at it. it has, so, these are all results that kernel b per piece range of a b star are all coming from there. So, we will be applying this theorem at uh, some point of time and uh, now we want to apply this result for the weak formulation, weak solutions. So, you have to how to apply that. So, I will prove it for some boundary conditions, you should also work with other solution. Recall L naught of u in uh, second order linear elliptic operator in uh, divergence form as d by d x i of a j of x d u by d x j equal to f uh, in omega and u equal to 0 on d omega and this is the equation you want to study. So, what are the assumption a j a j is symmetric symmetry you do not need to assume a j is elliptic that is the important thing elliptic continuous you are assumed and you are given the definitions of that. So, you start with uh, so what is the space you are looking for. So, you are looking for the space uh, uh, from the motivations from the previous uh, course as well as from this course now you are looking for a solution in this oblow space because to take the boundary condition. So, you are looking for plenty of motivations are given uh, u in h 1 naught space. So, that is your Hilbert space. So, you look for solutions there. So, how do you get a big formulation uh, choose uh, and you assume f is in L 2 of omega actually uh, can assume u f is in h 1 naught dual that is also possible okay. and that is dual and that is nothing but your h minus 1. So, whatever analysis I will I am doing here it also works for h minus 1 of omega the only thing is that 
instead of an integral or an inner product in L2, you have to work with the uh, duality bracket between H1 naught and H minus 1 that is all you have to do it. So, how do you get the weak formulation? We have done already, but now it is a more uh, we are actually going to prove the existence by applying the lax milligram lemma. So, multiply uh, this equation star by uh, v you can do it v in uh, uh, first you start with v in smooth and then uh, you can see that by density thing. So, and you apply v from h 1 of omega integrate by parts integrate by parts to get the weak formulation integral of a j of u x d u by d x j d v by d x i equal to f v integral of f v. No boundary terms this is your f v f v is in an L 2 you can take L 2 actually ok and this is is your a u v. So, your problem is so that implies you look for u in h 1 naught of omega such that a u v is equal to f v for all v in h 1 naught of omega you see. So, you have to prove the existence. So, to prove the existence you need continuity and boundedness right to prove existence only two conditions to prove existence uniqueness existence uniqueness. How do you do that? Uh, you have to prove the continuity of a u v is equal to modulus of a i j d u by d x j d v by d x i. Now, apply boundedness of a i j this is less than or equal to m into norm of grade u summit everything L 2 into norm of grade v at L 2 and that is less than or equal to m into norm of u at h 1 h 1 naught into norm of v at h 1 naught h 1 naught. v at h 1 naught of omega and that uh, is that is continuity. What about ellipticity? Continuity. So, you have to prove h 1 naught ellipticity ok. So, we need to prove h 1 naught ellipticity. How do you prove that one? So, you have to compute a u u this is equal to integral of a j of x d u by d x j I am again repeatedly writing first time d u by d x j i and this of course, you know that uh, by ellipticity this is alpha into norm of grade u square you see. So, you have that, but what we need is this one this is the question this has to be replaced uh, by some constant alpha prime into no this is L 2 ok. So, norm of u in h 1 naught of omega square and this follows follows by Poincare inequality follows by Poincare inequality where Poincare inequality if you are not convinced and if you are studying first time Poincare inequality norm u at L 2 is less than or equal to norm grade u at L 2. So, you can estimate some grade u 
but the, you can put it no mu. So, this can be proved. If not, uh, do it as an exercise. If you are learning for the first time, you have to do it that way. So, you have anything that implies uh, there exists uh, unique u, this is by lakhs milligram. Milligram. There exists a unique u in H1 naught of omega such that AUV is uh, uh, equal to F for all V in H1 naught. Okay. So, so, there is a continuity estimate, maybe we will do it later for the uh, when I assume even the non homogeneous case situation. You can actually prove we will do this later actually uh, you can actually prove that uh, norm of u in H 1 naught norm can be estimated as constant in it is almost there, but uh, you can actually get immediately also you can have this is your continuity estimate for the well postness. Hence, uh, this problem is actually well post. Okay. Uh, should I do something more? Yes, one more, uh, a couple of remarks then I will stop. If, if A is elliptic, no, if A is symmetric as well, if A is uh, symmetric as well, then you can be characterized by can be characterized by u in h 1 naught of omega and then j u is equal to uh, minimum of j v where the minimum is taken over h 1 naught or only when it is in the symmetric case. And what is your j v? Your j v is equal to half of integral of a i j of x d v by d x j and d v by d x i minus integral over f v. So, you see you get the minimization problem in the case of symmetric case and yeah. So, uh, as I said you can actually get yeah this case you can prove it. So, maybe I will uh, before coming to the next class uh, you try to get this estimate as an exercise. We will show you when it is uh, studied full non thing uh, uh, when we study L naught of u equal to f in omega and u equal to g on, I will make remarks on d omega. I will also make something when you get a strong form you get a weak form and it is also important to show that if the solution is smooth you should be able to get back your strong form. Then you only you will basically say that your weak form is a genuine weak form of your strong form. So, you should be able to go back every strong form will give you the weak form under suitable multiplication or whatever be the definition, but when the solution is, go, uh, is smooth you should be able to go back to get your uh, strong form. Okay. So, I will stop here and then we will continue these uh, things with the different boundary conditions uh, and for some other systems etcetera. Thank you, thank you very much.